with Hillary, and certainly you do it with Hunter or whatever, but I don't want to do it with Hunter either. And I'll bet you the father probably pardons him. Let's see what happens. But He called it. He called it right there. He called it. Let's run it back. But I could have done it with Hillary, and certainly you do it with Hunter or whatever, but I don't want to do it with Hunter either. And I'll bet you the father probably pardons him. Let's see what happens. But yep. he's a bad boy. There's no question about it. But I don't want wow. to hurt people. I really don't. Uh, I wow. I have to say this. The country has to heal. It has to get better. We have a really... Um, this tremendous anger in this country from the stupidity that we're watching. But I could... Yeah. Um, shout out to President Trump actually calling this. And uh, yeah, we're going to get into our uh, tweet here on X. But before we do that, I just want to say shout out to the King Squad, the King Squad family, the King Squad Elite. You guys are the bomb.com. I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. And I hope everybody's having a great and awesome day. Smash that like button. Hit subscribe. Share these videos so more people can be exposed to what's going on out here in the world. So shout out to Nick Sorter right here. Uh, breaking. President Trump has brought President Trump has brought up pardons for J6ers after Biden pardons his son. Yes, pardon them day one. So here we have it. Oh, you can't see that. You definitely can't see that. All right, then. We're just going to keep it right here and do that. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Um, yeah, shout out to Donald J. Trump. Does the pardon given by Joe to Hunter include the J6 hostages who have now been imprisoned for th for years? Such an abuse such an abuse and miscarriage of justice and there you have it so the man himself shout out to trump and uh yeah biden out here you know breaking rules again and uh showing just being biden you know and showing us uh exactly why we need trump in office so uh somebody says right here if hunter can be pardoned and excused for any future crimes that have yet to be discovered it's time to pardon the j6 detainees facts detainees all right there we go um yeah i completely agree and uh we're gonna get into our next clip here shout out to benny johnson and uh somebody says they should have never been sent to jail someone else said yes pardon all of these wonderful patriots and someone else said uh let me see let's see here imagine the things we don't even know that that that's a good one that's a good one imagine the things we don't even know you know what are some things you guys want to see Trump handle as soon as he gets in office? Comment them down below. Let's get into our clip here, and I will give my commentary more so on the back end. Let's go. Tom, uh, what's it feel like to be right? You know, sometimes. Well, you know, one of the reasons I'm always out, one of the reasons, Benny, I'm always outraged is because I'm always wrong. Because believe it or not, I believe people should be able to do the right thing and they will do the right thing. And I'm always wrong about that, right? And uh, it's because I'm an optimist that I'm always outraged. And uh, what we see here, really, as you point out, is uh, talk about the bookend for the racketeering operation that's in Joe Biden's political career. Uh, this pardon is an outlaw pardon, a rogue, um, a rogue act by the president who's abused his authority. You know, pardons are supposed to be specific. This pardon wasn't specific. There's was some specificity there related to the two charges, uh, but he has a blanket pardon for everything else he may have possibly done up until yesterday. For all, so for all we know, he was doing coke in the White House yesterday, and he would have been pardoned for that under this theory of the pardon that um, Biden obviously didn't write. As far as I'm concerned, uh, this was a self-pardon by Hunter Biden, uh, written by Hunter's lawyers, signed on by uh, a demented, senile president. And you know who's partly at fault for this? Republicans. Mm. They didn't impeach him. They didn't push to invoke the 25th Amendment. And so when you have someone like this in office, <clears throat> you can expect uh, this, type of, um, this type of abuse of power and corruption because he's not the one doing it. And not that he would be honest if he were, uh, but there are other factors in play here behind the scenes that I hope the next administration spends a lot of time investigating because you can be sure Judicial Watch will. Yeah. So so let's let's move there. Uh, I think that this was something that if you clearly know the nature of the Bidens and you've been on this program, Tom, for years, we started the show off saying 
Listen to the people who have been right for years on this program. We've had the Tom Fittons, the Julie Kellys, the Mike Davises, and the Cash Patels of the world talking about the crimes of the Bidens and talking through the nature of the Biden crime family and knowing exactly that the parasitic nature is, of course, going to be to cl- use public office to absolve themselves of all of their crime, which this does, I mean, this effectively says we are the criminals, probably one of the biggest crime families in history. We've committed so many crimes that we need a pardon that's twice as big as Richard Nixon's. So it's the biggest presidential pardon in your lifetime or mine to absolve us of these crimes. And ultimately, this goes back to Ukraine, the date that the Burisma contract started. So you've been right. Trump was right to ask questions about what we were doing in Ukraine. And, and, and we are guilty is what this says to me. It seems like the greatest admission of guilt um, in potentially in American political history. Well, and it's also perfectly consistent with everything else he's done in office. He's yes. used the office to not only enrich himself, but to protect himself from accountability. And whether it be abusing office to target his opponents, uh, working with his allies in Congress to impeach Trump, as you point out, for blowing the whistle on their corruption, and then trying to jail him in order to distract uh, from the real corruption that was readily apparent to his own Justice Department uh, that there was this international racketeering operation, RICO, uh, being run out of the vice president's home, uh, vice president's office in uh, during the Obama administration, and it continued into the presidency. It's clear. Uh, so, you know, if Congress ha- gets its act together, and I'm, I'm suspicious that it will be able to, uh, there'll be hearings on this. And frankly, though, uh, the President Trump has another prosecution or investigation to commence once he's president into what went on Hmm. Joe Biden. And this is not a self-pardon. Biden has also been, you know, dodging accountability with the media. That's something I just want to point out as well. That was extremely frustrating to me um, as well, which is, uh, you know, he when 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 you look at the media, he used the media to attack Trump, uh, you know, pick out all of Trump's uh, flaws or even create issues with uh, Trump and and he pretty much there there was no bad news covering Biden anything that was really bad that you know addressed Biden for what it was either it got blocked or we had to re-upload it on X or watch how we worded it on YouTube or on Rumble and all this other nonsense and uh it just shows you how corrupt they are right there as well. That's something I want to point out as well, because he he pretty much just hid with the media as well. The media would like mainstream media was not highlighting Biden's flaws. OK, they were not doing that at all. They were just attacking Trump. So that automatically is just conditioning people to think, OK, Trump equals bad man. <laughs> and, he, you know, Trump is the villain. But in all reality, you know, you're being played. And, you know, we saw this. We saw right through that. That's why we were out here, you know, uh, you guys were out here supporting your uh, supporting creators, okay? And we were out here pushing this message out so that more people can see what's going on, you know, because the mainstream media wasn't going to show it. And that's, that's just something I wanted to point out. Comment down below if, you know, you remember all that. Joe Biden still faces, in my view, significant criminal liability for what went on with his son. Now the leverage in getting his son to testify against him is lessened, right? Which is the part of the point of the pardon because there's no nothing that prosecutors can give uh, Hunter in terms of, you know, cutting his jail sentence in order to induce testimony. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, we need strong guys like Cash Patel, uh, folks like Pam Bondi. And frankly, the president's got to direct this investigation out of the White House. Mm. Don't leave it to the Justice Department because we know how that will work. There has to be somebody held accountable for this. The, there's Jim Biden. Every Every Biden has their fingerprints on these shell companies. James Comer has come on this program numerous times and explained sometimes for close to an hour the shell company structure of the Biden family and how so many Bidens were getting paid off. And Joe Biden better have the pardon printer ready for every family member because it seems like you could really cut this thing uh, a lot of different ways. Yeah, but it doesn't protect them all. Uh, certainly the way the Hunter Biden pardon has been written, I, if I were the Justice Department or the Trump administration, I would just proceed accordingly. There are two cases that have been knocked out. Everything else that, he's, that we, we are supposed to believe has been knocked out. Well, that's an area of law that uh, uh, Biden is standing on treacherous ice over. 
uh, because uh, typically pardons have to be specific as to the offense. Hmm. And to have a blanket pardon like this, uh, I would argue, isn't constitutional. Hmm. Wow. So you believe that this, there, there may be some constitutional challenges to this pardon? Well, I think there are constitutional issues with the pardon, whether there will be brave uh, <laughs> challenges to it out of the Justice Department under President Trump, uh, that remains to be seen. Okay. So the prosecutions and the investigations into the Bidens should continue. Uh, Donald Trump, with his first response to this, saying, what about January 6 political prisoners? Joe Biden include them? Do you think this is a telegraph of Donald Trump saying he will be pardoning J6 political prisoners? And Tom, what's your take on that? And more importantly, does this make it easier for Donald Trump to do that? We'll talk about selective prosecutions, right? Uh, the January 6th defendants are all the target of a corrupted Justice Department. Not one of them was honestly prosecuted, as best I can tell, mm -hmm. in the sense that whatever alleged crimes they did or were convicted of, uh, it was the result, that process was the result of, of bad faith uh, political uh, decision making by the Justice Department that, in my view, doesn't hold up in terms of the standards of justice Americans expect from the Justice Department. So every single one of them should be pardoned. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pro-lifers targeted by uh, the Biden administration, they should be considered for pardons. Frankly, anyone who was targeted by this Justice Department where there was a political angle, President Trump should be looking at it. And I mean like Senator Menendez to Santos to whoever. This Justice Department was corrupt to the core and all prosecutions related to politics should be considered to be suspect. Wow. So does, uh, and it does seem like Donald Trump is, is making that play now. And what would be the, what would be? At this point, it's like Biden and his whole family need to just be locked up. That's, that's, I mean, <laughs> it, uh, tell me if that's extreme. I don't, I don't think it's extreme at all with the way they sabotage the country and then the stuff they get away with. I mean, at some point you got to cut the head of the snake off. I mean, that's kind of where my head is at, you know, lock these guys up. Lock, lock them up seriously, okay? With this, the stuff they done is just ridiculous, and uh, it's it's criminal. But that's my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. But let's let's get back into this. <laughs> and, I, and I'm coming from like just an overall standpoint as well. You know, just seeing what they've done overall, it's just been absolutely atrocious. So that's that. What would be the the, the system that would be in place there? So would, would Donald Trump on day one could he just pardon J6 defendants? In, in, a, in a similar blanket, in a similar pardon style, um, how would that operate, Tom? How, what would the mechanisms of that be? Well, you know, that's a good question because I was thinking about that today because of what Biden had done. Uh, you know, looking at the history of pardons, there's kind of, there, there is precedent for uh, just a mass pardon of anyone involved in January 6th, and they don't need the specificity other than offenses related to January 6th. And I think he might be able to do that with one, one document. Uh, the lawyers around him were probably going to want him to have him sign you know, 1,500 documents, right? Plus a mass amnesty for anyone else that the Justice Department hasn't gotten around to prosecuting. Uh, so it can be done, I think, relatively quickly. Uh, it doesn't take the government long, uh, uh, you know, unless they are stalling and uh, engaging in sedition, which you can't rule out uh, from the holdovers in the Justice Department and the uh, nasty liberal Democrats who uh, disguise themselves as career civil servants in the Justice Department. Uh, but it, it's gonna be work, but it can get done and uh, there may be a way to get done, you know, within an hour of his being inaugurated. Wow. So, so there we have it. Shout out to Benny Johnson right there. And, um, you know, I, did, I just want to play some of that clip right there and uh, go through some of these comments and then really get everybody's thoughts. Uh, somebody said each of the J6 hostages should receive $10 million each up upon being pardoned. Uh, I don't think that would happen, but... Uh, I do hear what you're saying. Uh, we'll see what you're saying here. Herman. Shout out to Herman. And uh, someone else said they jailed those people illegally. And uh, someone said weaponized justice system. And see, this right here is what I'm talking about. How Biden weaponized the justice system is absolutely insane. And then, you know, he he, he got uh, uh, Trump hit with these fines. Then Trump was getting thrown in jail and all this other kind of stuff. He got a mug shot that went viral. And... Um, just all that lawfare and then, you know, how he handled America was just, it was just horrendous. You know, this is why I said, you know, at some point, this man Biden has to be held accountable. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to see, 
I mean, it, I'm, I'm coming from a topic of really just a perspective of justice. That's that's kind of where I'm that's what I'm looking at, because, you know, I really think that the Democrats really just played in the Americans faces. I really think that Biden just, you know, played in America's face and and played and played with the American people as if, you know, the country is a toy and as if the people are just some pawns um, just to be thrown around. That's, that's kind of my thoughts towards it. Let me know if you guys agree. Let me know your thoughts and perspective towards how did Biden handle America um, down below. Comment down below. How do you think uh, Biden should be dealt with and be held accountable? Um, someone else said uh, they should have never been sent to jail. And yeah, it's 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 really wild. I, I just think Biden is very irresponsible, ultimately. Irresponsible, unfit, um, all, all the above. Just... It's just wicked. <laughs> I can go on and on, but I digress. Uh, so that's that for now, you guys. Um, really looking for a really I really love Trump's energy with how he's he's just addressing these things head on and uh, moving just moving forward and his proactiveness. And I really admire that, you know, and I really think we, we all know Trump means business and that's why he got elected. OK, well, he got elected for a plethora of other reasons as well. But, you know, that being a major one he, he's very active he jumps right on the tar on the problem um which is something i really am in you know i'm glad to see you know because it, it would with sleepy joe in office it just felt like it felt like four years felt like eight to me that's kind of what happened it's like four years felt like a sentence like we've been sentenced to to you know You've been sent you like your punishment is to be sentenced uh, with the Biden administration. You're stuck with Biden for four years. And it was like a punishment. <laughs> and so seeing Trump just, you know, be head on and just address this stuff. It's like, oh, man, it's a breath of fresh air. Like I said before, in one of the previous videos, I'm like, oh, man, it's like the sky is bluer. The grass is greener. The sun is golden. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, <sighs> America smells smells free again. But uh, that's that. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to the King Squad, the King Squad family, the King Squad elites. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.